So let's talk about some examples of fit gap analysis. Fit gap analysis or gap analysis typically takes place in a hierarchical fashion. So we have our users who are going to give us requirements. And let's say your first level requirements in general are some in sales, some in manufacturing, some in finance, or warehouse management, and so on. So this is the first level. Now the SD consultant comes in and he starts to explore more of the sales related requirements. And say this particular industry or the requirements um, from a sales perspective, what's needed is let's say MTO processing, and variant configuration, and let's say batch management, and resource related billing, revenue recognition. These are all the various processes that are required in sales. It doesn't end there, right? Let's say you pick, let's say pricing. As you start to explore, explore all these processes, let's say we are trying to explore more on pricing and you see that price in pricing, there are these one, two, three, four, five different features that are needed by the users. Let's not go too deep in. Now, not all the features that are asked for by the customer need to be available in SAP. Some could be available in SAP out of the box. Some require customization. Some cannot just be done within you know the constraints of the project, like the budget, resources, whatnot. So you're gonna do this fit gap analysis and say, hey, you know what? This is a requirement. Yes, it can be met. Uh, this can be met. Yeah, this cannot be met because you know it's a requirement. Yes, but it cannot be met because of whatever reason it, it requires too much of effort or it it's something that cannot be built um, using either a standard SAP or customization um, or it's exorbitantly expensive or something like that. So and let's say oh this is also met this is also met so this is one that's not met so that's a gap. Now sometimes if the if now, after having identified the gap, it's not always necessary that the gap needs to stay as a gap. Sometimes the business might want it, might throw the resources at it and ask you to customize it. If that is the case, yes, the gap can be mitigated by you know, doing some customization, building an alternative around it, and then ensuring that the requirement is met in some way or the other. The outcome of this analysis is going to be your fit gap analysis document. So this document is what's going to help you finally in say estimation. It could be done at a project level, at a program level, at a uh, enhancement level. At any level or phase of the project, you can use your gap analysis to estimate the costs that will be incurred when you implement that feature or the gap. And let's say if additional software is required in terms of um, trying to fit that gap and so on. It's also going to give us an estimate of the risk that's associated with implementing all these features. For all the features that have a fit, we don't have a big issue, but upfront, because we are identifying the gaps, the risks are also identified. And if necessary, if the budgets permit, you're gonna talk about a mitigatory plan, which is gonna say, yes, 
this feature is not available in SAP, but it is a requirement. So we're going to mitigate it by providing this additional, you know, report or a compensatory report or uh, another piece of software which is going to do that thing for them. Or we're going to throw a whole bunch of customization at, at SAP and then implement that feature. For example, there are some things that cannot be done in SAP no matter what. Uh, one such example is in one of the uh, uh, projects that I've done, they've asked for what is called as a look ahead feature, which means at the line item level of the sales order, the users say as, as soon as they start entering that material, like the first two characters or whatever, the SAP should automatically pull the rest of the characters and the descriptions and then show it as a drop down. Now that's too much of customization that can, it can be done, maybe using a core mod or whatever, but that's too much of customization and the amount of effort that's involved has to be justified for the amount of uh, resources and amount of benefits that you're going to generate out of that customization. And then finally, it was decided in the steering committee that this was not required.